O sing a new song to the Lord, for he has worked wonders. In the sight of the nations he has shown his deliverance. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. I'm offering the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass for all those who live, work, and worship in this parish. Also, of course, I'm including all of you who are joining us online today. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christ eleison. Christ eleison. Kyrie eleison. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in the celebration of Easter graciously give to the world the healing of heavenly remedies, show benevolence to your church, that our present observance may benefit us for eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. About this time, when the number of disciples was increasing, the Hellenists made a complaint against the Hebrews. In the daily distribution, their own widows were being overlooked. So the twelve called a, meet, called a full meeting of the disciples and addressed them. It would not be right for us to neglect the word of God so as to give out food. You, brothers, must select from among yourselves seven men of good reputation, filled with the Spirit and with wisdom, We will hand over this duty to them and continue to devote ourselves to prayer and to the service of the word. The whole assembly approved of this proposal and elected Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, together with Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch, 
a convert to Judaism. They presented these to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. The word of the Lord continued to spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem was greatly increased, and a large group of priests made their submission to the faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May your love be upon us, O Lord, as we place all our hope in you. May your love be upon us, O Lord, as we place all our hope in you. Ring out your joy to the Lord, O you just, for praise is fitting for loyal hearts. Give thanks to the Lord upon the harp. With a ten-stringed lute, sing him songs. May your love be upon us, O Lord, as we place all our hope in you. For the word of the Lord is faithful, and all his works to be trusted. The Lord loves justice and right, and fills the earth with his love. May your love be upon us, O Lord, as we place all our hope in you. The Lord looks on those who revere him, on those who hope in his love to rescue their souls from death, to keep them alive in famine. May your love be upon us, O Lord, as we place all our hope in you. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. The Lord is the living stone, rejected by men, but chosen by God and precious to him. Set yourselves close to him so that you too, the holy priesthood that offers the spiritual sacrifices which Jesus Christ has made acceptable to God, may be living stones, making a spiritual house. As scripture says, see how I lay in Zion a precious cornerstone that I have chosen, and the man who who rests his trust on it will not be disappointed. That means that for you who are believers, it is precious. But for unbelievers, the stone rejected by the builders has proved to be the keystone, a stone to stumble over, a rock to bring men down. They stumble over it because they do not believe in the word. It was the fate in store for them. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a consecrated nation, a people set apart to sing the praises of God who called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. Alleluia. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still, and trust in me. There are many rooms in my Father's house. If there were not, I should have told you. I am going now to prepare a place for you. And after I have gone and prepared you a place, I shall return to take you with me, so that where I am you may be too. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. If you know me, you know my Father too. From this moment you know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, let us see the Father, and then we shall be satisfied. Have I been with you all this time, Philip, said Jesus to him, and you still do not know me. To have seen me is to have seen the Father. So how can you say, let us see the Father? 
Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak as from myself. It is the Father living in me who is doing this work. You must believe me when I say that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. Believe it on the evidence of this work, if for no other reason. I tell you most solemnly, whoever believes in me will perform the same works as I do myself. He will perform even greater works, because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Gospel today is one of the most well-known pieces of Scripture, certainly to the clergy. Why is that? Well, if you've ever been to a requiem mass or to a funeral service, you may well have heard it being read. And why not? Because the words from the lips of Jesus are very comforting for the family and friends of the departed. Do not let your hearts be troubled, he says to us. Trust in God and trust in me. There are many rooms in my father's house, and I am preparing a place for you. I shall return to take you with me, so that where I am, you may be too. What great words to hear as we stand in the church, or by the grave, or by the coffin of a loved one, consumed with grief and anguish. And that message is true for all of those who have lived their lives for and with Jesus, as active members of his family, the church. For the reading goes on to say, no one can come to the Father except through me. What does that mean, do you think? Jesus tells us over and over again in St. John's Gospel that to have seen him is to have seen the Father. And Jesus brings to us the message of the Father. Everything he says comes from the Father and is endorsed by him. Jesus does not speak out with a lone voice. It's impossible for him to say anything which is not of the mind of the Father. The Father, Son and Spirit are in complete union with each other on absolutely everything. We know they are consubstantial, we say it in the Creed each week. But not only are they one substance, they can never be divided by thought or opinion. The message of Jesus, then, is always the message of God. And in that message for each one of us to embrace, and in that is a message for each one of us to embrace, that we cannot introduce something new and radical into the realm of heaven or into the life of the church, which is not of the mind of God. If we do, It makes our situation, our life, irreconcilable with the divine life. To be one with God, our minds must be formed to reflect the mind of God. When we were united with God in baptism, our whole earthly life revolves around and has at its centre becoming the best Catholic that we possibly can so that we can be recreated and formed more and more in his image. We need to embrace the Lord and to put him at the heart of our lives. Cardinal Hume used to say, The Catholic life given to us by the Church is not a -a pick-and-mix counter, ideas to consider and then embrace or reject. The Church reveals to us and leads us into the mind, heart and life of God. And that's it. As St. Peter tells us today, 
The Lord is the living stone, rejected by men. But we are to become living stones, built on that stone, making a spiritual house. We have to build our lives on the solid foundation of Christ. There is no other way to be a real Catholic. If we do anything different, it's going to crumble and fall. The life and message of Christ, as revealed through the scriptures and tradition, is what we have to embrace, not a version we might like to create for ourselves and would find easier to tolerate and to live. It's a big ask, of course, but we're not left alone to carry out this work. Our Lord gave us his Blessed Mother to constantly be at our side and to assist us with our life of faith. This coming Wednesday, the Church will celebrate the Feast of Our Lady of Fatima, where Our Blessed Lady appeared to the three young visionaries, two of whom, Jacinta and Francesco, were raised to the, altars of, uh, the altar of saints of the Church three years ago. Our Lady appeared six times to these children, and always on the 13th of the month. And there was one thing, that was at the heart of every message she brought. Pray the rosary. Pray the rosary. All the messages contain an insistence that we should pray the rosary daily, offering up the difficulties of the day, the sacrifices we make for the good of the church and for the suffering of the world, that the world might be conformed into the image of her son. Praying the rosary has always been at the heart of the lives of the popes. You often see photographs of popes, new and old, walking around the grounds of the Apostolic Palace, rosary in hand. Saint John Paul II attributed his survival from gunshot to Our Lady of Fatima when he was shot on her feast in 1981. And a bullet removed from his body is now in her crown in Fatima. Many Catholics have found the rosary invaluable, a way to keep their hearts and minds in union with God. Each day, reflecting on the saving mysteries of our faith, asking the intercession and the closeness of our Blessed Lady, and desiring to be conformed more and more into the image and life of God. On the 13th of July in 1917, our Blessed Lady of Fatima gave the three shepherd children a prayer, and she asked them to recite it at the end of each decade of the rosary, making the rosary a devotion which always intercedes for others, especially for those who are struggling with their faith or who have fallen away completely. O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, Lead all souls to heaven, especially those who most need thy mercy. Do you say the rosary? Is it an important part of your spiritual life? Perhaps you have long put it down or pushed it to the back of the drawer, let it collect dust. Or perhaps you have never been encouraged to recite it or don't know how to do it. Praying the rosary for yourself and for those for whom you're interceding, entering into the mysteries, may be the very thing which helps you and them to be saved and enter into the life of heaven, both here on earth and after death. For Jesus has prepared a place for us, for each one of us. He tells us so. It is where he wants us to be, and where we want to be. It is where he wants us. With the aid of our Blessed Lady and the recitation of the Holy Rosary, let us prepare ourselves for that place that we may be ready when he calls us.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. confidence we turn to our Heavenly Father and entrust to him the prayers of our hearts. Let us pray for Francis the Pope and Vincent our Archbishop. Grant them the strength to preside in the place of Christ over the flock whose shepherds they are. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. us. Let us turn to Saint Sebastian, <clears throat> patron of those suffering contagious diseases. Saint Sebastian, Guard and defend us every minute of every hour, and diminish the strength of that vile illness which is threatening us. We put our trust in God, in Our Lady, and in you, Holy Martyr. Be with us always, and by your merits and prayers keep us safe and sound and protect us. Commend us to the Blessed Trinity, so that when we die we may have our everlasting reward to behold God in the company of all the saints. Amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Let us pray for all the holy souls in purgatory particularly for those who have no one left on earth to pray for them. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and, and let perpetual light shine upon them. them. May, May they rest in peace. peace. Amen. Amen. In confidence, we turn to our Blessed Mother and ask for her intercession as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. In a moment of silence, we offer to God the prayers in the quietitude of our hearts. As always at Mass, we renew our love for Jesus, truly present in the most holy sacra sacrament of the altar. And we continue to pray for those who are not Catholic, that they may enter into unity with us. We wait for them with open and outstretched arms to come as soon as possible, not to a stranger's house, but to their own father's home. Grant we beseech you, almighty God, that we who in your name seek the grace and your protection through the intercession of Blessed Mary Ever-Virgin, your saints Sebastian, Adrian, Anthony, Rock, Benno, and all the saints, having been freed from viruses and sudden death, may serve you with untroubled minds. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. As I say each week, if you're with us online, now's the time to hit the button. Um, if you could uh, 
make an offering to the church today. I'd be very grateful to you. Uh, it's on the stream, I think, on Facebook. Um, but you can visit our website after Mass. If you could help us, I'd be very grateful. Thank you very much. Of my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O oh God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice, have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by the worthy way of life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all to Lord you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, he never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is a sacrificial victim who dies no more, the Lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly parts with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <laughs> to you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard your light and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Vincent, our Bishop, and all those who hold him to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, for they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord, Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. But please, O oh God, we pray to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. <clears throat> Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hand, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, by giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask, Lord, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, and be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith, and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we receive you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, by God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Saviour's command and for my divine teaching we dare to say our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us Lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all, and with your spirit. Anastasia, which all is peccata mundi, misadere noibis. 
Anas Dei, ui tolis peccata mondi, misa tede nobis. Anas Dei, ui tolis peccata mondi, dona nobis pace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Spiritual Communion. My Jesus, I most firmly believe that you are really present in the Blessed Sacrament. I place my whole confidence in you, and I love you above all things. Oh, that I had never offended you. I ardently desire to be united to you, my loving Saviour, and never to be separated from you. What have I in heaven, and beside you what do I desire upon earth? Vene Domine Jesu. Father, I wish that where I am, those you gave me may also be with me, that they may see the glory that you gave me. Alleluia. Let us pray. 
Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just as you all talk to each other, of course, and get on the telephone, um, the clergy are no different to you. And uh, a common theme talking to priest friends is how much we miss having you at Mass. We know it's difficult for you not being here, um, but I'm not playing a fiddle, but it is difficult for us as well. We do miss having you here and sharing in the celebration of the Mass. So just to assure you that you're very much in the prayers of the clergy. Today is going to be a big day for us in England, of course. The Prime Minister is going to outline the steps to move things forward. I'll ask you to pray for him and for the government. It's a really tough call trying to sort everything out in the best way possible. That's what they're trying to do. They're never going to please everyone, of course, um, but they are trying to do their best for everyone. So please do support them as best you can, and certainly with your prayers and what they ask us to do to move things forward. At five o'clock today is Holy Hour, which of course includes the recitation of the Rosary. Why not join us? Five o'clock, Vespers, um, an ex- exposition, Vespers, 5.30, Rosary, and then six, just before six o'clock, Benediction. Have a great day. Try to avoid the rain. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Now, mighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your love. Thanks be to God. Regina Celi, Leitare, Alleluia, Quia que meru isti portare, Alleluia, Resurrexit, Secut Dixit, Alleluia, ora pro nobis Deum, Alleluia. <coughs> Gaudé la tare Virgo Maria, Alleluia, Quia son exit Dominus Vere, Alleluia. Oremos. Deus qui per resurrectionem filii tui Domini nostri Iesu Christi mundum rectificane viniatus es. Presa quae somus ut per eius genitricem beginem Mariam perpetuae capiamus gaudae vitae. Peion dum Christum Dominum nostrum. Amen.